Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. That said, this particular message is not only for Christian women. It is intended for anyone who has served in the United States military, anyone in particular who is a veteran of fighting in another nation. And this message is sent to you um, in love so that you can find healing in Jesus Christ. Of a truth, many people who have served in foreign wars come back to the United States and they, they suffer from poverty, homelessness, depression, suicide. And, and of course, uh, my heart goes out to you if, if this is your condition. And that's at least part of the reason why I'm making this video today. And in no way do I want to say something that dishonors your heart. Because I do know that people who have served in the military, to the, for the most part, the majority of people, do so because they believe themselves to be serving our country, protecting our freedom, and, and making it safe for their families to live in peace in the United States. So I, I'm not speaking this message at all to condemn anybody. Rather, it's quite the opposite. And I, I would ask you to be patient and listen to the entire message in this video. I am a Christian woman, and what I'm speaking to you is from the Word of God. And it is a message of healing and hope to those of you who have been injured by your service in, in the United States military. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is that it's regrettable, but true, that people have been deceived about what the United States military is. And I think that most of you who have served in other nations know this. Deep down inside, your heart tells you that you were misused and that your good intention was manipulated in order for you to do things that were not at all to protect American freedom or to keep your family safe. Rather, the United States military, for some time now, has been used by the globalists, by the corporate satanic state, in order to enforce, pardon me, I had to get some uh, a little bit of a hot drink there, uh, on my throat. So at any rate, you you were um, when you served in a foreign war, you, or um, in any kind of operation of the military, you were not defending freedom, as you had been led to believe when you enlisted. Rather, what you were doing was defending the interests of the globalist corporate state, the satanic B system that seeks to dominate the entire world. Now, I'm not saying that to you to condemn you. Rather, it's, it's my belief that it is never a good idea to forbid people the truth just because initially you might hurt their feelings. You know, when someone has been deceived, they are victimized by that. And many of you have been victimized by this kind of deception. And many of you have partaken in crimes that you didn't sign up for. And for that reason, you suffer now from remorse and guilt and, and blood guiltiness because you know that at least some of the things you did and all of the things that the United States military did in those lands was not about American freedom. It was about corporate profit. It was about stealing other people's natural resources. It was about imposing a global system of monetary control. And it was for the purpose of bringing those people who live there into subjugation to the globalist state. Now, I'm not going into a lot of politics here, but I did need to, to make that statement so that you understand part of why, uh, part of what I am going to speak about now. The United States is an aggressive country. It no longer serves uh, the people the, 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 the uh, government that exists in Washington, Washington D.C. 
It is a globalist corporation that operates as the military arm of the beast system. And when we recognize that and, and try to help people who have served in the military, we don't forbid them the truth, the reality, because to do so is to deny their very real pain. And of course, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance that happens when people know deep down in their heart that what they were doing in those lands w was not what they had had been told it was, and that they actually were not going to liberate anybody, whether it be from communism or some kind of dictator as the American media tried to represent these kinds of wars. Instead, what they found when they got there is that the people didn't want them there and, and that they were there to oppress and control the people and to steal what belonged to the people of those lands. So, of course, this causes in, in the human mind a, a real disconnect. And, 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 and yet, we as the American people who are not in the military have participated in the lies that, that uh, enticed you into doing something that you never wanted to do. Okay, so I, I'm not someone who has served in the military, but I'm well aware that many people in the United States say things like that you're a hero, that you have defended our freedom, that we're so proud of you and, and glorifying what you did. And this causes a disconnect because deep down inside, you know that's not true. And so you feel cut off from the people in the land because they don't understand what you did and exactly the crime that was committed against you. Many young people go into the military and they do so for economic reasons because they're promised education, uh, loans that are uh, beneficial for buying a home and what have you. And, and so they go into the military because they live in an economic condition where these kinds of things wouldn't be available to them. And they do so with a good heart, with a courageous heart, wanting to serve our country. And so when I'm speaking to you, I'm not speaking to condemn you, but rather to, to speak with understanding about the reality of the things that you faced. So let's begin in the Word of God, and let's turn to Isaiah chapter 53. And may the Lord bless the reading of his Word. And we're going to read here a prophecy uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, starting in verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. What I would say to those of you who have been wounded in your service to the United States military, that Jesus Christ died for human sin. And when we have done things and partaken of things that are evil, and we were misled and trapped into doing such a thing, that we can remember that Jesus Christ paid for that if we turn to him. And there's some things about turning to him that, that I want to explain to you. But when we consider some of the things that um, we have done in our lives, and this doesn't isn't something that only applies to soldiers, it applies to all people because we are all sinners and we have all done things that we regret. And it, to a large degree, all of us did those things without really realizing what it was that we had done. But Jesus Christ paid for that. So when we now seek healing, we can tr truly find it in him. And he can bring 
uh, peace into your mind and your heart, even though you have committed grave crimes against other people in other lands. And I, believe me, I'm not saying that to at all to condemn you, because of a truth, there is no sinner in the world who has not committed a crime against God. We all are sinners, and I'm no different from you. When I'm reaching out to you with this message to bring you the truth of God's word, because to lie about what happened in those nations, to lie about how your heart was corrupted, the wounds that you yet carry, is to do you a disservice. To act as if you can't handle someone telling you the truth about what happened to you. And not only that, to tell you the truth about how to be healed. Before I talk about how to be healed from your wounds, I first have to address something that people have also been lied to about, and all of us were. Everyone who ever was born in the United States of America has been lied to about many things contained in the Word of God. And one of them is the idea of self-defense being a Christian thing, that Christians can use a weapon to defend themselves. And this is not correct. So very quickly, I want to review that material for you from word, the Word of God, because if we don't understand this, then we are not really able to be healed because we're not repentant of what we've done. So if we turn to Revelation chapter 22, and we will start in verse 14. And these are the words of Jesus Christ as spoken to John. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So this is talking about people who gain eternal life in the kingdom of God. And these people who enter in through the gates of the city are people who have obeyed the commandments, that do the commandments contained in Scripture. And this is crucial for us to understand. Because there are a lot of religious people who will tickle your ears and flatter you and tell you that you don't have to obey the commandments of God, that you can enter into the kingdom based on your intention alone. But that is not what the Word of God says. So let's read on here in verse 15. For without, so without the gates of the city, those who are not in the kingdom of God. For without are dogs, which is a reference to homosexuals, and sorcerers, which is a reference to those who take drugs or prescribe drugs or dispense drugs to people. Sorcery is a reference to the Greek word pharmakia, which is the same Greek word that is the root of our modern term pharmacy, pharmaceutical drug, pharmacist. So anyone who partakes of those things in the scripture is referred to as a sorcerer. So without our homosexuals and those who partake of pharmakia, pharmaceutical drugs or sorcery, and whoremongers, this would be anyone who takes part in fornication, in prostitution, in any kind of sex that outside of the covenant of marriage, including pornography. So whoremongers and murderers. And I'm going to get back to this, but I'm going to just read the rest of the verse. And idolaters, those are those, anyone who worships anyone other than the one true God, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So this final one is, is a reference to anyone who either practices deception or who loves deception. In other words, they prefer to be deceived rather than to know the truth and find healing from God when they repent of their sin. So someone who tells you the lie 
that God doesn't expect you to follow his commandments, that that person is not going to enter the kingdom of God. But those who love that lie, who want to remain in their sin, and, and so therefore they deny the truth of God's word, they also will not enter the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter, deceiver or deceived, that both of those are considered to be those who partake of a lie. So now I want to return to this word here, murderers. And I want to talk about what that means, because many people think along the lines of what the legal system, how the legal system defines murder. So in the legal system in the United States of America, murder is considered an unlawful killing. So in the United States of America, if a woman wants to have her unborn child cut out of her womb and killed, that's a lawful killing. And it's not considered in, these, in the eyes of the state to be a murder. But in the eyes of God, it is a murder. And I realize that a lot of these things are upsetting to people, but we can't repent of anything if we don't know what we've done. So that is one kind of murder. Another that, that's sanctioned by the state. So in God's eyes, it's a murder. And in man's eyes, it's a lawful killing. Another kind of murder that the state sanctions is when someone is employed as a soldier. And, or they're employed perhaps in a, a corporation that makes weapons that kill people. That in the eyes of the state, these people aren't murderers. They're serving their country. But in the eyes of God, those people are murderers because they are taking lives that have done nothing to, to, to the people who are taking them. If you're someone who it takes part of manufacturing or designing weapons, then you are creating instruments of death that, that kill innocent people. And you have blood on your hands. And you are a murderer and need to repent of this. Similarly, anyone who uses those weapons and they, they think that because they're following orders, so they think that someone else in authority told them to kill this person or these people. They think that they're not responsible, but before God, you are responsible because unjust wars would not happen if no one partook of them. In other words, if, if no one participated in an unjust war, then that, that unjust war could not happen. The thing is, is that people, um, absolve themselves of responsibility in two ways. The first way, and the soldier, is to say, well, I do as I'm commanded to do. So therefore, my commander is responsible. And this is the same kind of logic that, say, um, guards in Nazi concentration camps had, that they were just following orders. This is how Satan gets people to, to be able to accept doing something that otherwise they would not accept. If you knew that you were culpable before God for any human life that you took, you would be a lot, a lot less likely to put yourself into subjection to an organ, organization that asks you to kill without thinking about it, to blindly follow orders. Now, the second way that people lie about this, and this would go for the American citizenry, it, and, and of which I am one, is that we are convinced somehow that to, to support the troops is different than to support the war. Now, I have no ill will towards anyone who has ever served in the military. And in my heart, I would want to support them in departing from evil and finding salvation in Jesus Christ. But I cannot support what they do. Because what they do is murder. And, and so the U United States media, when we first started a war in Kuwait, and the American people were against it. The American people were against it. The media came out with a campaign to say, well, even if you don't support the war, 
you must support the troops. And so everyone fell for that trick, and the war was supported. And since then, there has been very little opposition to any of the wars for oil, the corporations, the United States, globalist corporations war for oil, because people were confounded by this lie. They were tricked into thinking that somehow they didn't care about our men and women who were dying. And, and so they couldn't say anything anymore about in opposition to the war without being accused of not caring about our soldiers. You see, this is how Satan operates. He tricks people either into doing something that they know is wrong or into supporting something that they know is wrong. So none of us is um, immune here from God's judgment. We all have blood on our hands, soldiers and citizens alike. So what is it that we do if we know that we have partaken of murder? And I would just add there's another way that we partake of murder is that when we allow the state to steal our money in order to pay for murder, whether it's to pay for abortion, whether it's to pay for uh, soldiers to kill, whether it's to pay for the development of weapons, it doesn't matter. If we are allowing our money to be spent in such a way without objecting, without objecting, then, then we are guilty of murder. Now, another thing that I would have to say is part of the reason why evil continues is because people believe the lie. So when we're talking about that, that those who love a lie won't make it into the kingdom of God, well, to love the lie that, that Americans are a Christian country and that we follow Jesus Christ and that we worship God here and hold to the scripture. And meanwhile, we look the other way when our government does things that are criminal against other people. When, when we even profit by those actions. So we end up living in prosper prosperity because of unjust wars that were fought by the corporate military. This is to partake of a lie, and people who are in agreement with that will not enter the kingdom of God. So I think I've just about insulted everybody here. So now we'll move on. To, um, and I'm laughing, I'm, I'm not mocking anybody, I'm laughing because I, I get attacked a lot for speaking truth and um, for holding to God's word. And I, I recognize the things that I just said are going to bring on a flurry of um, angry people. But if you're feeling angry right now, I would ask you to just hold on, listen to what I'm going to say next, because we all have partaken of this as American people. We have all partaken of it. And so we all need to repent. And if we don't, if we don't, then, then God is not going to uh, recognize us as his people. So let's go to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah chapter one. Isaiah chapter one, and let's read verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. This is how God feels about these things. And we could even go into deeper back into the Old Testament to read what is said in the book of Genesis, chapter 9 and verse 6. Whoso sheddeth a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Now you might say, well, the Israelites shed a lot of blood when they took the land, and that, that's true, they did. And the reason for that is that, that those people, their blood was corrupted. And they were um, part fallen angel, part man. They were not 
uh, human, they, they were Nephilim. And that's why God commanded that in order to keep the, the, um, the bloodline of humanity clean. That is why he commanded that. So those of you who think that God is a, a, a genocidal psychopath, what I would say is you just don't understand the truth of what was happening there. And of course, now these days, we have a lot of the same fallen angels working to medically corrupt human beings' DNA through the use of pharmacia, medicines, and technology, a combination of both. And people who partake of that and, and try to get eternal life some other way than salvation in Jesus Christ will end up the same way. They will end up with their DNA corrupted. They will become a modern-day Nephilim, a chimera, and an abomination before God. And this is part of why the, the sin of pharmacia or sorcery is so serious. Because the, the enemies of God try to convince people that healing and life comes from witch doctors, sorcerers, and pharmacia, when healing and eternal life come through one source only one source only, and that is the great physician, Jesus Christ. Now, when we're talking about sin, any kind of sin, we, we can go again now to Isaiah 53 and consider how it is that we are healed. Anyone who is a sin, how it is that we are healed. So let's turn to Isaiah chapter 53. And let's read here again in verse, let's start with verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So how is it then that we can not be dwelling forever under the judgment of God? If God turns away and does not hear the prayers of those who have blood on their hands, and we all do, we all do. If God turns away from that, if God says that if you have partaken of taking the life of another man, that you, your blood will be required of you. If that's God's opinion of it, what did Jesus Christ say? What did he say? And how do we find redemption? Well, first let's read what Jesus Christ said about bearing weapons. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 52. Matthew chapter 56, 26 and 52, verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take up the sword shall perish with the sword. Verse 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So Jesus Christ could have called legions of angels to protect him, and he didn't. We, who are Christians, follow Jesus Christ. And even though we know that God will bring righteous judgment to the earth, we don't take up physical weapons to defend ourselves. Let's read now further about what Jesus said in John chapter 18, verse 36. John chapter 18 and verse 36. And this is when Jesus is on trial before Pilate. Jesus answered, my kingdom, and that would be our kingdom as Christians, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom 
were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So as Christians, people who love Jesus Christ, people who serve him, don't take up weapons to defend the faith, to impose their faith on anyone else. We do not take up weapons to defend ourselves. And we can read of this if we read a little bit further. Let's go now to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verses 24 through 26. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, and that would be anyone who wants to follow Jesus. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, if murderers don't enter the kingdom of God, then we know that if we take a life or if we agree with the taking of a life, if we fund the taking of a life, then we won't enter the kingdom of God. And as Americans, we all have blood on our hands. So we read in Isaiah that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, that Jesus Christ paid for human sin. So let's read about redemption. How is it that we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our own life. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 2, and we'll start with verse 12, and we will read through verse 13 to begin to understand how it is our sins are washed away. Buried with him, meaning Jesus Christ, in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and, uncirc and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So we can understand that to be forgiven our trespasses that we need to be buried with him in baptism. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verses 38 and 39 to understand what baptism, pardon me, what baptism is and how it is, um, how it is properly done as a Christian. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so not in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, not as the outward sign of an inward change, not as a public profession of your faith, but for the remission of sins. So if you have blood on your hands and you want that sin washed off of you, then you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. So let's read again here. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So anyone, Jew or Gentile, who wants to be a Christian needs to be baptized into Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name. There are two parts to baptism. One is water immersion, and this is how we are crucified with him. And we lay down our flesh in death with him so that then we can receive the Holy Ghost, which is the second part of baptism, which is being indwelt with the spirit of the living God 
so that we have the power to overcome sin. This is the means of salvation that anyone can access. So to understand this a little bit more, let's go now to Romans chapter 6, and we'll begin with verse 3. Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, so baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the likeness of his death. And how did Jesus die? He bled to death on the cross. So he was crucified. If we are baptized in his name, our old man, our flesh, is laid down with him in death. And we then have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to us so that our sins are remitted. So let's read this again in verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. This is how a person who recognizes that they have partaken of murder gets clean from it. This is how our wounds are healed. And we all have wounds. But what I would say is that those who have served in the United States military have terrible terrible wounds because they were enticed by the enemy of God, Satan, to partake of murder, unjust killing, and, and they were deceived into doing so. And, and so people who have done this thing often walk around feeling completely disconnected from their countrymen because their countrymen don't know what happened to them and they glorify them as heroes when really what they should do it is uh, comfort them with the word of God and show them the way of salvation so they don't have to carry around that awful blood on their soul anymore the blood of murder on their soul that they can be washed from that you see when I tell you the truth about what the United States corporate wars are. When I tell you the truth about how God feels about killing another man, when I tell you the truth about the sins of the nation of the United States, I don't say that to exalt myself or to condemn you. Rather, I tell you that because I'm a U.S. citizen too, and I was just as guilty as you. But Jesus Christ can wash away all of that. And you can then walk a holy life. You don't have to defend your flesh anymore. You can be a, a saint, a member of God's family, and live for the kingdom of God, knowing, you know, the, the systems of this world hate God's people. And throughout the, the ages, ever since Jesus Christ laid down his life, Christians have died for their faith. And they don't take up weapons to defend themselves. They willingly go like lambs to the slaughter, just like Jesus Christ did. Because we don't stand for defending the things of this world, our own flesh, our own life in this world. Rather, we stand for the kingdom of God, which is about mercy, which is about forgiveness, which is about loving one's enemies. So let's read now in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and we'll begin with verse 13. 
Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby we perceive, pardon me, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him. So this is a message of love to those of you who have served in the United States military and asking you to consider these words from the Holy Scripture that you might, as all sinners must, turn from your sins, repent of your sins, and turn to Jesus Christ and find eternal life in him and no more partake of murder. No longer seek the things of this world because this world is passing away. And very soon, Jesus Christ, the righteous, will judge the world. And if you have your, your sins remitted by his blood, then it doesn't matter what you have partaken of in the past. All that matters to God is that you listened to his son and you loved him and obeyed him. And for that reason, then, you will gain eternal life with Jesus Christ and his kingdom. All we need to do to have eternal life is to turn from our sins and turn towards Jesus Christ. And then, after our sins are remitted, we receive the Spirit of God dwelling in us, then, then live a holy life, serving eternal life, the eternal things, the things of God, and not the things of this world. The things of this world are quickly passing away. And I make this message to you because the time is short. It's time to repent for everyone, not just for soldiers, for everyone, and turn to Jesus Christ and turn away from the lies of the religious people who tell you that, that uh, to be saved, all you have to do is keep apologizing to God every night or say a sinner's prayer, that baptism doesn't save you because those people are deceived and deceiving many. The Bible tells us that if we are a sinner, there is one way into the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said, unless a man be born of water and of spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. So this message, I pray, goes out to many. Please share it with as many people as possible, for the time is short. And while not everyone makes videos, anyone can share videos. And if this message rings true in your heart and you know someone who has been wounded by the United States military, then, then send this video to them. Maybe it will, will draw them into eternal life with God in his kingdom.